So regarding hormone tracking, what are the key hormone related signs women should track to optimize training and avoid overtraining during perimenopause specifically? This one's really hard because it's not like hormones. A lot of people think that they're very linear. It's like, you know, we have a baseline amount that happens during our low hormone phase and then it, it beeps up over ovulation. And then we have a, an elevated state over the course of our luteal phase. That's not really what's happening. We're seeing pulses throughout the day. So for example, after ovulation, if you were to measure progesterone on day 21, which is the day that they say measure progesterone to see if you have adequate progesterone levels. If you measure it at eight, 90 minutes later, it could be eightfold different because of the pulse of the progesterone. So we don't know. You can't have blood tests. We have to look at, at our trends over time. So you're talking about HRV and how it changes from summer to winter. So for women with perimenopause, it changes almost weekly because we see that there's so much stress on the body. So we really have to look at the trends over time and not look specifically and say, oh, it's because I'm perimenopause and these hormones are doing X, Y, Z. We know that they are, but we can't go day-to-day -day variation. We have to look at the trends over time. And when you look at stuff like HRV, resting heart rate, I mean, just because those are really accessible metrics for most people. Do you, do you suggest you look by week, by month? Like, what do you think is the best trend line or unit of time to, to really look at that, the changes? Well, you can go a week. You go one week and see what's happening and then compare mm -hmm. the next week. Because when you first start, right, the more data you have, the better it is. The biggest view is to look trends over time over three to four months. But not everyone can go back retrospectively right now and do that. Because you also have to know what are the stressors across it. Like, was I sick? Was I traveling? Um, was I up with a bad night's sleep? So all of those things come into play. So if you start tracking and you put notes and say what's happening, then it gives you really good, robust, objective data to say, oh, yeah, I see what's happening. And I see when I have a really bad night's sleep, the next day, my heart rate variability and recovery score is like 20. So I know that if I have a bad night's sleep or I'm going to have a late night for work, then I better not plan on doing a hard session the next day. So you start to see those trends. Awesome. So here's the last question from our educated consumer. Should women manipulate training phases based on menstrual or perimenopausal hormone fluctuations? It's a tough word for me. Or is, it, or is consistency more important? Consistency, yes, definitely. We want to be consistent and show up. When we start talking about hormone fluctuations and how it makes us feel, this is the layer that is really nuanced because we know that when you have a regular menstrual cycle, then there are days specifically within your patterning where you're not going to feel so great and you can pick those out. But with perimenopause, it's so variable. We don't know. So this is where you really have to I pull women back and say, let's not really look so much at all the data, but let's look at how I feel. Let's become intuitive with, I wake up and mentally I feel like I'm an eight. Physically, I feel like a two. Maybe if I warm up a little bit more, I have a coffee, I go through things, I do some mobilization, that physicality comes up to a six or seven, then boom, I can do a hard session. But if it doesn't come up or mentally you stay low, then you might want to manipulate a little bit. And with perimenopause, it could be a week of feeling really flat and awful. And if that starts to play out a little bit longer, then you might want to do just a couple of high intensity just to wake everything up and see how that makes you feel. Warm up becomes a little bit longer. But again, we have to bring it back to how I feel. And mentally, am I capable? Physically, am I capable? And give ourselves permission to say, you know what? I need a day just to back off. Because when we're thinking about fitness and coming from a training perspective, there's always that you need to just push through. And we know that that's not right for men or women, but in particular, highly stressed, highly active, working, you know, primarily perimenopausal woman. Yeah, that's a hard one for many people to swallow, right? Yeah. Especially depending if you train, you did athletics, sports your whole life. It was always just get up, sunshine, get out there, get back in the pool, get back on the court, whatever it is, get back I in know. the gym. I know. I've had learning experiences through that recently, too. It's like, okay, yeah. I've had injuries, I've been traveling, and I'm just like, okay, just give yourself permission to say this is a temporary blip in time. Let's find one thing to focus on instead of trying to be the best at everything, which is how we've all been conditioned to, you know, like get in the pool, go for your run, go for your ride, hit these metrics, try to do all of the things. And it's not quite right. <laughs>
we can't keep doing that. <laughs>